All right, so it's been a while since I broke down Jordan Love. I think he's playing some really good football. Has just continued to ascend throughout the season. I've said it numerous times that I thought he's made good decisions pretty much all year uh, as he's cleaned up some different things, as he's seen some different things. He's only gotten better. I thought this was one of the best games that he played. So I thought it was time with a big game coming this weekend to break him down once again, okay? And so as you guys know on here, it's not just – about showing highlights of the quarterback, but it's about teaching along the way. All right, so the Packers, I like this little concept. So they go with a four strong, right? Four receivers up here, and they're gonna run the solo down at the bottom. If you like the one-on-one, -on -one, you can take it. They're gonna run kind of an inside post, an outside go right here. Looks like a hitch, and then an in, okay? so. I like the idea here. You see Jordan coming back and feeling the Vikings rotating. So they did this a number of times. This is what we call an invert. It's a two invert strong. Okay. So it's two high guys playing a deep half of the field. And normally when you get cover two, corner comes down, safety goes over the top. When we talk about an invert, what an invert is, it means that the corner is going to run and play up over the top. And then they're going to have a safety play more of a sky or underneath position. So they invert it. It's still supposed to be technically the same type of coverage, even though the underneath zones are treated more like what we would call a cover three, where the back end is more like a cover two. Okay, so he gets this invert cover two. Does a great job of holding this safety, looking at this safety, gets his hips to turn backside. So he wants to take this shot down the middle of the field. I love it. All the underneath defenders are even. That's the shot. Now, the key is how do we make these throws? Okay, so this is what we call an inside post. We've also got a big post. So a big post is a post that's thrown up and over, kind of past the last line of defense, and we're throwing it for our guy to run under it. And then there's a drive post. Usually when you get cover two, it has to be a flatter, more of a drive throw, so this backside safety can't peel back and get involved. And so Love the read right here. Now, this is just about the throw, right? If he steps in and drives this throw right there, I believe that's a huge completion here. Instead, he throws it up and over, allows the backside safety to get involved, and it leads to an incompletion. So just a great teaching point for all those young quarterbacks out there, coaches that are out there teaching their guys. Cover two post is usually going to be a drive post as opposed to an up and over post. Okay? Tough one here, so they're gonna run. All right, so used to number our routes. So this is a 73 combination. So a seven is a corner and a three is an out. So they're gonna run this a little bit deeper. So the out is gonna be 10 to 12 yards and then they've got a corner over the top of it. All right, so I like to play, just not a great play against cover two. Okay, so again, two high safeties here, corner down here. So we're gonna run this out. That corner is in great position to be able to take away the out because he's supposed to stay underneath because he's got help over the top. Running a corner route here, and you see that we've already lost leverage. Now, sometimes this safety will be tucked inside on the hash, and we're able to get leverage. So if that corner wants to stay down, we got a shot at the corner route over the top of it. But you see right here, we lose leverage to the corner. We're, we got a corner underneath us right here. I'd love to see Jordan come back to the backside. Now they don't have a lot of guys getting out on the check down, probably supposed to be. I'd love to see Aaron Jones come out here and do a check down there so we can at least get a high low on the backside against cover two right here because it's not a great concept when we lose leverage. So almost gets it, but kind of a dangerous throw. The corner doesn't do a great job in trips and falls, but if he plays this well and just spins right here and holds, He's in great position to take this throw away. So this is just kind of one of those you chalk up to, ah, perfect coverage against the play that we've got called. Work to the backside. Try to get that in if you can manipulate those backers and then hope somebody gets out here as a check down where you can just get rid of it and try to get some kind of completion, even though they almost made that work right there. All right, so little play action. Right here, we're gonna run the deep hook. Okay, deep hook, gonna run a guy out here to the flat. 
And now again, these are just coaching little things that become so important. You're going to see Aaron Jones here kind of come out as a check down, but he's going to work his way to that front side hash here. So I just want you to watch that as it plays out. You see what happens because he goes so far over, this guy's in a position to cover him, but he stacks this hook right here. And now there's not really anything for Jordan Love, even though he's probably got the hook. So spacing, even on checkdowns, becomes so important. Deep hook. Let's get the flat out here to try to pull that outside linebacker. And then let's set Aaron Jones back on the backside hash. So then, if this defender wants to go take away the hook, we throw the backside check down. If he wants to match to the back with the backside check down, then we've got a throwing lane right here to our deep hook. So it just kind of clogs up right there. I think, uh, I think Jordan wants to throw this, but it clogs up because we stack on top of it right there. Now, if he's able to see this a little bit quicker and he comes out and this guy buzzes harder to that side, now he only goes with Aaron Jones, but if he goes harder to that side, love to see him go one, and then work back here to the, the comeback two, and then find the check down over here three. So we can go high to high to low here if that first high one is covered by the underneath guys. Now, I don't think that's necessarily the case here. I think he's gonna have it, but then we clog it up with this. So he's stuck over to that side, doesn't get backside quick enough, but that would be the progression. If you know you don't have the hook right now, get back to your comeback and work the backside. If you think you have your hook and that guy goes out underneath it, then just replace to a check down. Okay, so it wasn't necessarily a great start with their first drive, but that's okay. Like I said, one of his best games, I thought, and thought he was doing the right thing for the most part on those plays. It just didn't play out exactly or little differences in, in how we throw something. Okay, this is something that I taught a few weeks ago. So they're basically running a stick flat combination. Everybody in the league, everybody at every level runs it. And too often, quarterbacks get stuck feeling like, hey, I don't want to be late to the stick. So they go right to the stick instead of reading outside first. Thought Jordan in this game, I'm only going to show one of them, but did a great job of staying with it and staying patient with it. Right? So we got the stick here. Read the outside defender. Whoever the outside defender is, he collapses. Take the flat, take the flat, take the flat, take the flat. To me, it's always the bigger opportunity. You put a good ball on him and everybody else is condensed inside. They get a chance to turn the corner. There's more run after catch usually with the flat than a stationary stick that they usually catch and they get tackled right there. So great job right here. I like the feet, something that I've been harping on with Jordan all years that does so many things well. Clean up the feet a little bit and he does it right there. Boom, sticks that back foot attacks the throw and you see turn the corner get a flat good ball turn the corner you get a nice 10 12 15 yard gain off of a flat throw okay we're going to come back with similar type play right here flat and the stick okay possibly could have taken the flat here now i understand we've got leverage over here so you feel that color outside of Aaron Jones. So maybe that deters you from taking it. Only thing I would say is also see the movements of that guy. Okay. So he's got so much depth away from the flat that unless he comes downhill right now, holding that leverage, you can probably still take the flat if you get it on him quick. And he has a chance to react off of that defender. So you see how the defender is backing up. So he's the flat defender there. If we get the ball on Aaron Jones right here, I like my options, okay? But he passes it up and I see color outside. Sometimes it's about, we feel that color and we, we get away from it. I want you to see that color and see how he reacts after the snap. But then comes inside, this is taken away. Not great spacing back here on the double ends, but does a great job of working back all the way across to the in route. Sticking it on the back shoulder. So when I talk about the in routes, I'd love to see this guy seem a little bit harder in here. Okay, so it's about spacing. I'd like to see this guy burst a little farther here, maybe get a little bit more depth. So we create a little more spacing between these two guys. So we force different guys to cover them and one guy can't cover both of them. But I love the process by Jordan. If you don't like the flat, see it and watch his feet. Boom, boom, boom. See how he pops his feet 
and he stays balanced and ready to throw at each of the different points that he's progressing. Really, really well done in an area that he's really progressed throughout the year. Okay, just a, another quick teaching point for all my QBs out there. Okay, so it looks like they're running what I call pinch, an influence post with an in route on the outside, and then they're running this swing off of it. Okay, so it does appear that we've got some pressure here. So maybe Jordan thinks he's going to be in a hot situation here because they bring the extra guy strong. You notice here with the offensive line, they're turning this way, and so there is no hot situation. So we want to kind of settle in and let this play out, you know, because you see how quickly he throws his flat there. And again, maybe he thinks he's hot off of this linebacker coming here, so I got to get it out quick. Um, and maybe the offensive line just fix this. I can live with that. If not, if he's not hot, I'd love to see him finish and not panic right here. So finish and Check and see if you're going to get this in, okay? We're going to read this defender right here who is already kind of shallow here, but I want to read that defender. So one of two things happen. I either read it out and maybe have a shot at the big throw down the field, which is what we really want, or if I don't have it, it means because I let this play out, this guy has to drop and get deeper to take away the in, and then that gives me more space here if I am going to dump it off late. So just want to see him kind of settle in even off of that pressure, Take a seven-step drop, see what's down the field, because you see, as he throws it there, we've got two guys coming downhill right now where the big window is right here, but we just, too often, you see quarterbacks around the league that, that panic a little bit and get the ball out quicker, or even if something pops open, they get the ball out quicker, and it makes it easier on the defenders to not have to play the entirety of the route. I want them to play and take away the end. Show me you're gonna take away the end and drop take away the end. So when I do throw it to my check down, there's more space. Those guys are going backwards and it sets my check down up for more success after the catch instead of giving the advantage back to the defense. By far my favorite throw of the game. So here we go again. We talked about this with one of those early plays. It's the invert two. Safety going back here. Corner, trying to work to a deep half to that side. They've got another similar type play where they've got a guy going down the middle of the field, and then another guy I think is going deep as well. But same thing that happened on the other one. Jordan checks the backside safety, gets the backside safety to widen, knows that there's even a bigger gap in the middle of the field because we've got a corner trying to overlap and get back inside by the hash or a couple yards from the hash and you know he can't get there so jordan does a great job of eyeing the backside safety and then he even starts to get pressure in his face right here almost to the point where he's going to bail out of this but watch him he sees it it's a quick reset load up on the back foot and look at his throw beautiful throw 40 plus yards on the money and again, you see it, the drive throw. It's not up and over. This is a drive throw right here. He beats everybody that's involved, doesn't let the, the, uh, the receiver cross the middle of the field. Backside safety can't get involved. Beautiful all the way around by Jordan Love for the touchdown right there. All right, love this one. Okay, so... What do we always tell ourselves as a quarterback? Okay, so what you're going to see is we're going to motion this guy across. Okay, so the first thing is when we motion that guy across, we see this guy running man with him. Awesome. So great indication that it's man-to-man -man coverage. Then what they have on this play is they have what we call a deep over uh, or an influence post, depending on the offense and exactly how you teach it. But they've got somebody going to the backside numbers on this play. So... Once I get a solo receiver to the backside and I notice that his guy is pressed over here, what I want to do on the snap is I want to come out and peek at that defender. If that defender stays down, what I know is there is nobody else that can cover this backside area. Easiest throw for a quarterback is something coming back to the inside. Easiest throw for a quarterback is one where you have nothing out in front of it and it gives you the ability to change 
the type of throw that you might have to make. So he notices the man-to-man coverage right here is clearing out the backside. He recognizes that this guy's down on the backside. So now it's by time and they bring pressure here. Again, pressure all over him. So he's got to bail. He's got to get away from the pressure, but he knows, he knows there's nobody over here. I just need to let my guy get into that area and I can lay the ball out for him. Well done right here. You see it doesn't even have to be a perfect ball. You get exactly what you want. Buys time away from the pressure, lays the ball up and goes and gets a big play. And those are the kind of things for a young quarterback that hasn't played a lot that I'm loving right now. Seeing and understanding the big picture of what he's looking at. Okay, here's another one. Comes out on a naked bootleg. Naked bootleg, we start with the flat. We're always going to peek there because a naked bootleg is really about fooling the defense and just keeping them honest in the run game. But if you get the edge and you've got a little bit of space, peek and see if you have the flat. But then up over the top of it, we usually have a deep corner or a comeback. And then we have the cross coming. So Jordan does a great job here of coming out, eyeing the flat. Oh, it's covered, working up to his corner route right here. And you see him trying to flip his hips right here. I love it. That's what you want to do. You want to flip your hips and try to stop your body momentum as much as possible. Because if your momentum goes this direction, the ball is going to go that direction. So that's the only negative maybe here with Jordan is you see he tries to turn, but doesn't do it quite violently enough. And you see his body, body falling away. He's kind of hitting a fall away jumper. And where's the ball go? Ball keeps carrying outside. Now it's not way off, but if he's able to flip his hips and slow his body down a little bit more here, he's got a big play, maybe a touchdown. So love the vision, love the read, just little technique things that he's continuing to clean up to make him even better. Okay. Another one right here. It's a third and short situation. They're going to run stick. Okay, so we basically have the stick inside. It's an out or a flat by number two, and then the clear out go on the outside. So these are ones, especially in a third and short situation, where the first thing that I'm doing when I come up is I want to see the relationship between the three guys that are playing in man positions or are playing in the zones that can take it away. What do we notice here? Outside guy is pressed, okay? So yes, he's running a go route. To me, a press go route, unless you just have one of those dogs, is a low percentage throw. So I never wanna take that on a third and short if I feel like there's a better situation to complete a pass and get the first down. So if on all of these, let's say each one of these defenders was playing press man. Okay, if each one's playing press man, now maybe it's 50-50, Pick your poison. Do you like the stick breaking away? Maybe if you have a physical tight end, or do you like to go around on the outside? I get it. If they're all pressed, none of them are clean throws. You can go ahead if you want. And if you talked about it, hey, go get the go route on the outside. But when I've got off coverage here, especially with the number two guy, and I know this guy's breaking out quick, and I've got a third and short under five situation, I'm not going to go with the low percentage throw and I'm going to go with the high percentage throw and just get the first down Boom, right there. There's the throw right there, right? You see how easy this is because of the pre-snap read. Okay. Hey, if you want to peek the outside press go route, I really have no problem with that. Although you really want to get this on this guy as fast as you can, but I have no problem saying, Hey, you got press. Let me peek and see if my guy wins. So if you peek out there and you notice, he doesn't win right now. He doesn't win clean and give you an easy or higher percentage throw there. So get right off of it, knowing you've got off coverage right here, put the ball right here, get the completion, move the chains. And again, not a bad throw, almost get it, almost a great catch. But again, you see the margin of error is so small on a play like that, where I really want to look at pre-snap read to get the whole picture and understand where the easy throw is to keep the chains moving. Love it right here, okay? Young quarterbacks, one thing, and I shouldn't even say young quarterback. A lot of quarterbacks in the league struggle with pressure. Minnesota's so good at this, bringing all these guys up at the line of scrimmage. You never know who's coming, who's dropping. Sometimes they'll drop eight guys into coverage. Other times they'll pressure with eight guys. You never know what's going to happen, so you always have to have a pressure plan. What is a pressure plan? Pressure plan means if they bring guys that make you hot. 
if they bring a guy that is not going to be protected, what do you do with the football? What is your quick throw, your quick read on that play? Well, here, here comes a free runner. What do we know? We got a quick hook right over the ball right here. What am I doing, right? Probably could have had a quick throw here, maybe a quick out right there, but you got a lot of quick throws, but have an answer. Don't be surprised by pressure. Here's Jordan, comes back, no panic, hits that back foot, boom. Replaces the pressure with the throw. Easy first down right there, but it's all about having a plan, knowing where you want to go with the football, and getting it out in a timely fashion. Okay, and I want to show this too, because I know oftentimes people will go back and watch the film and go, oh my gosh, why did he throw it here? This guy's open, okay? But I want to show you sometimes what happens in this league, okay? So we're going to run a flat, a hook, and a corner. It's a play that I call popcorn, okay? So it's a pop, a flat, and a corner, okay? And as we, this plays out, you know, the first thing we always want to see is I've got off coverage on the outside. So what does that mean to me? That if I get a quick read with my flat guy, I'm really thinking, hit that pop right now. I've got off coverage. He's probably going to soften. I'm going to have a chance to hit that pop before he gets to the corner if I'm on time and get that quick read, okay? So as we come out, there's what I'm talking about, right? This would be the quick read right here that we have a shot at, okay? And then you're going to see that this corner drives, which is kind of the next part of it. You don't have your flat. He's covered right here. Go to your pop. If the corner drives on that, then you look to your corner route up over the top. That's technically how this play should be read. It's not as easy as I make it sound right there, okay? But you're gonna see all this play out. Oh, maybe you have the hook. Oh, shoot, you don't have the hook. This guy jumped it. Man, look at that guy wide open for a touchdown. Okay, yep, I get it, I see it. But I want you to show you why this is hard, okay? First thing I want you to see is there's two defenders right here, okay? So we have one, two, three underneath defenders to this side. So it's not as easy as in a normal situation, you wouldn't have this guy. You would have one, two defenders. So this guy goes and takes the flat. This inside guy is held off by the corner and it's an easy throw to the pop right there if that happens, okay? If we were going a different way and this guy held off the pop, then it's an easy throw to the flat. Got it. There's an extra defender over here that I don't know why he's over here, probably shouldn't be over here, but there's an extra defender. So even though we kind of get around him and the pop shows itself, it's tough. We got color here, we got color here, and so we don't really have it. Most times we don't even see or expect that guy to jump because the underneath guy should play that and get the corner over the top. So the corner over the top is really just a happening that you hope you see sometimes. So why do I show all that? Because People might be sitting out there going, oh, this is one that Jordan missed. Could have had the touchdown over the top to the corner. I think this is a wonderful job by Jordan. Where covered, okay, lots of color there. I don't like it there. Get to your check down. Don't try to see through this and expect to see the corner jump in and hold the football to see if he goes over the top. You let defenders do what you expect them to do. Meaning, I expect this guy to stay back there. So unless I just kind of feel it or see it during the process of things, I'm not hoping he jumps. He should be back there to cover that. We got two extra guys sitting here for this. Get to your check down, exactly what Jordan does in a timely fashion, doesn't like it, doesn't like it, boom. Get it out, know where your check down is, get a positive play, especially in the red zone. All right, it's another one of my favorite plays. So it's very similar to the one we talked about before where if you have an over route on any particular play, what you wanna do when you come out is you wanna see the deep defender to that side. If that deep defender gets depth at all, then you know you're off of that and you're gonna read your underneath stuff. If that deep defender to that side, who happens to be the safety here, stays down or squats or jumps something, now we know we've got a shot up over the top. So as we run this, okay, it's that same play. Flat, pop, right here, okay? So maybe he could have taken the flat right now because again, we have distance, I get it. Maybe the outside guy stays with width, so maybe he could have hit the pop right now those are both possibilities and down here wouldn't have been mad if he got the ball out of his hands and got a completion with either one of those but feels like this guy holds leverage outside so eyes come back to this guy in the pop inside and as he does that this safety drives on that to not let that quick throw happen and what does he do he knows if that guy drives what am i doing and i love the reset here he set now he's going to reset he knows i'm set to throw the quick one 
Oh, now I'm going to throw something a little bit deeper. Reset, reset, get back away from the pressure, reset your feet. Boom. Plants his feet right there, lays it up. Beautiful touchdown right there. Seeing all the different elements at play and knowing his response for them. Another one here, just, just an RPO. We got a run coming. Bring the safety. Bring these extra guys. And really why I showed this is, again, the feet. Right here, boom. I like it. Look at him. He's going here, set. Okay, so he pops his feet to line up for the throw. Not trying to throw this as a fall away jumper. Not falling away from the pressure. Knows the pressure's coming. Pop your feet. Get set. Get lined up because now his whole body is going this direction. Get your whole body going that direction. The throw is going to go that direction. Boom. Drives it. Gets it out of there. And it's all about planting the feet. Getting the power. Driving it from the back hip. Money throw. Answering the pressure question. Okay, so Minnesota will play this one, two, three, four, five across defense. Still don't have any idea why they play this. Uh, I think it's one of the easiest coverages to beat. They just sit back soft, give you all kinds of stuff underneath, and then bring some sort of pressure. So everybody else underneath is attacking. Everybody else on the back end is getting deep, so they leave all the zones underneath wide open. But here's what I love about this is that for me on this play, when I have a corner off situation, I always want to read this outside in. Now, I wouldn't be mad if you know that they're playing soft. You could go inside out and take the easiest throw. But I like the outside in throw. Corners off, read that next defender. That defender widens, you go right to the next guy. Somebody comes and steals that, you work your way inside. Always harder to go inside out and be late to a long throw to the outside. So I like reading this outside in. Exactly what Jordan does right here. He comes back, he's got the corner off. Reading number 20. Number 20 stays tucked inside. Get it out to your one-on-one -on -one stop away from the bodies. Right now, good timing, good throw. So you see the growth by Jordan Love getting better and better, but it's about good decisions, knowing what he's seeing, knowing what his answers are. And that to me is why he's had such a great season and he's got his team on the cusp of a playoff berth if they can just win this weekend at home.